I'm sure you have a lot of questions like, Ron, why was that last video uploaded in 4K? What was the point of that? It's sure, it's glorious 4K. It's, it's a really nice looking video, Ron, but why? Why would you subject us to such crisp quality? Ron, how can I be more like you? Ron, why do you only have 30 Twitter followers? Ron, why are you wearing a jacket indoors with the sleeves rolled up? You are not an anime character. These are all good questions, but number one, this isn't a Q&A video. Number two, well, I mean, you read the title, you, you idiot. Number two, I can answer those questions later for money. Number three, I'm just trying to stall until I get to number four, which is number four, and that leads into what we're talking about here. We're going to talk about Sam Raimi's unused Spider-Man 4. Alright guys, so, this comes to us from my favorite website ever, TV Tropes. Which, by the way, we have a we have an unlimited fandom page, I don't know who made it. But, it, it needs some love, so go... And once again... <laughs> The, the guy from the last video cutting his grass is back, so uh, don't mind him, he's... It's not even his grass, he's, he's like a contractor dude, but, you know. Ugh. So the next? God, alright. Anyway, let's get into it. A script treatment was leaked online by an insider on the Superhero Hype Forums... Forums? Forums. Who was proven to be reliable. I'm not gonna click any links because I found out while you were screen recording, um... The recording doesn't go with you if you click into a new tab, so just bear with me here. And he goes in-depth into the- he or she goes in-depth into the proposed outline for the eventually scrapped film. In it, Peter cheats on MJ with Felicia Hardy, is the black cat in the comic books, but in this she would be known as the Vultress. Yeah. Played by Anne Hathaway. Now that's ironic, given that Anne Hathaway went on to portray the Vult. The Catwoman, I must have the Black Cat, because they're basically the, the same character. Um, what else we got? Anyway, Felicia Hardy, Vulture is played by Van Hathaway, while stopping... While working to stop the Vulture, played by John Malkovich and Electro. Electro seems to... I don't know, Vulture and Electro always seem to find their ways in unused Spider-Man movies. I can go into further detail on that in another video, but let's stay on topic. At the end, Mary Jane abandons him and goes to Los Angeles while Peter decides, out of depression, to once again give up being Spider-Man. <laughs> I wonder why they didn't make this! Okay, so we get another Spider-Man no more. And, um, what, well, oh yeah, the fact that he cheats on Mary Jane! Peter Parker, one of the nicest people in comics, while not under this... In the influence of emo dancing symbiotes. Okay, I'm okay, I'm losing my grip here. Anyway, <clears throat> notably, this treatment shares some elements that would be eventually included in the Amazing Spider-Man, including including the character of Matt Dillon, Matt Dillon, <laughs> Max Dillon, and his transformation into Electro. Matt Dillon. Listen, kids, I know you're too young to remember this, but there was a period of time where the actor Matt Dillon. Um, you know, he just shot electricity out of his fingers and talked about it being his birthday. It was a scary time. Some early treatments reportedly, once again, not clicking a link, had Peter and MJ having a child. Ooh, ooh. Peter killing the vulture and beginning a relationship with Felicia, no longer vultures here. So I guess she's Black Cat in that version. Which eventually causes Mary Jane to abandon Peter and take their son. This... It's almost like, it's almost like the Spider-Verse version where he's divorced, but worse. Like the other script treatments, the film would have ended with Peter abandoning his superhero career. Oh my god. Though this time in part because his new fiance is less than pleased with Peter killing the Vulture. According to several storyboards, the film would have opened up with a montage of Spidey taking out various B-listers from his rogue ga rogues gallery. Bruce Campbell was in talks to make a cameo as Mysterio during the scene. That would mean, in hindsight, that the, the villain Mysterio named Spider-Man in these movies. And I guess they also kind of foreshadowed this in Spider-Man 2, where he says something about, like... No one will be seated after the doors are closed. It helps maintain the illusion. So that's... 
that's like Marvel Studios level uh, foresight right there. Good job, Sam Raimi. Hathaway would have appeared as Felicia Hardy, but only instead of being the Black Cat, she would have been the Vultress. Though her playing a character who was the Black Cat in comics is hilarious in hindsight, seeing she ended up being Catwoman in The Dark Knight Rises. Yes. Raimi later claimed that Hathaway would have played Black Cat, though it is unknown... Though it is unknown if this was a rewrite or Felicia would change identities during the film. Honestly, I can see uh, uh, Avi Arad making them do, um... Making her be Black Cat and then Vultress just to sell more toys, because that's kind of like... That was the whole point of Spider-Man, the animated series, so that's why they used Hobgoblin first in that show. Raimi also wanted, reportedly wanted to do more cutting-edge CGI work, but due to the rampant executive meddling, including the film being Christmas-rushed to meet a May 2011 release date, plans to shoot four and five back-to-back -back without a script for the latter, that means second, and multiple scripts he said were terrible. Raimi walked away from the project, causing Sony to rush into production what would eventually become the amazing... Spider-Man. Alright, well, there you have it, folks. That is the story all about how Sam Raimi's plot got all twisted and turned upside down. And became... Honestly, I don't mind The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. The, the second one is, um... Garbage. It's, it's crap. It's mega crap. Um... And you know what, just for shits and giggles, we'll leave this extra bit. Sony also tried for several years to get a Venom, Venom project off the ground beginning in 2007. The studio commissioned several writers to do treatments, but none of them got past the planning stage. And were eventually scuttled off for years after the Amazing Reboot was announced. This was eventually subverted when Ruben Fleischer went aboard to direct Venom 2018. And while I'm here, uh, Venom 2018 is a fine movie. Um, I'm hearing rumors that... Tom Hardy Venom's gonna fight Tom Holland Spider-Man. But anyway, yes, that is the tale of Spider-Man 4 and how it never was and how Alex Ross lets out very confusing tweets about it and then deletes them. Um, and then Marvel blue balls us by, like, announcing a J.J. Abrams comic. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We will see you all in the next video. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And, um... If there's any movies that have never been that you want me to cover, let me know. Bye.